part two of Vietnam. So why was Tet the turning point? Well, here we go. It's a military victory for the U.S., but psychologically it was a victory for the VC because the Viet Cong showed that they could go up against us and surprise us. And guys, when we say surprise us, they literally had men coming out of manholes in the middle of Saigon. So they, they popped up in every major city, all 19 major cities in South Vietnam at one time uh, and, and really unleashed a, a, a hurricane on us. Um, the American public thought the U.S. was winning the war, but when they watched the Amer when they watched as Americans were killed in the U.S. Embassy and they watched they watched the scale of this attack, Americans soon realized this war is not over. This war is not anywhere close to over. This is a famous picture and video of the Tet Offensive, and that young man is going to receive a bullet to the head. And if you watch the video, you see the whole thing. That was on, I believe that was on nightly news real footage as well. So, what this does is for the American government creates a credibility gap. Fewer Americans trusted the government, and this would be the first time that we have Americans not trusting the government and saying, wait a minute, what is, what's really going on here? President Johnson said he would halt the bombing of North Vietnam. That will not be the total truth. President Johnson announces that he will not seek re-election on March 31st, 1968. Uh, think about that, guys. By this time, by March of our elections now, we pretty much know who's going to be our presidential candidates. And he announces on the 31st he's not going to run. So this opens up uh, a lot of opportunities for Democrats. One in particular will be Bobby Kennedy. The Malai Massacre happens March 16th, 1968. And what happens here is Charlie Company, um, a group of U.S. troops under the command of Lieutenant William Colley, they're doing uh, search and destroy missions throughout the Iron Triangle. And they're trying to find Charlie or the enemy and um, destroy them. So what happens here, basically these troops are overworked they are sent into the wrong what we would consider county they're sent into the wrong county they all had uh when you do the translation they have the same names in american or in english and um so they're sent to the wrong county and they're sent to the wrong village then they, they didn't know this though but our maps were not 100 percent accurate in vietnam and they come across of a peaceful village that they thought were harboring the enemy. 300 civilians, mostly old men, women, and children, are killed by Kali and his men. Point blank range, and it is execution style, and it is not pretty. Uh, what the what saves some of the other townspeople or the other village people is a helicopter officer, Hugh Thompson. He flies right into the middle of the firing when he sees what's going on, um, uh, doing a flyover. He lands his helicopter between Kali's troops and some villagers, and he says, if you're going to shoot them, you got to shoot me. So he stops this massacre, and these troops literally go off the deep end, and they are just killing anything that walks. So what happens here is Robert, uh, Robert Haberl, Army photographer, took pictures of the mission. His pictures will be released two years later after my life. Many Americans view all Vietnam veterans as baby killers. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, I had four uncles serve over there. And as I told you, they returned home one by one. And I had a couple of uncles in particular remember going through airports here in the U.S. And they were called baby killers and they were spit on. Um, so my, my family's personal history with this was not good as well as far as like my uncles had nothing to do with this. But. Most most veterans are going to be labeled baby killers from this era. So the Battle of Hearts and Minds, basically, we're going to clear the jungles. Uh, reason to expose the Viet Cong tunnel hideouts. That's why we want to do it. Um, U.S. planes drop napalm. Napalm is a gasoline-based bomb, and this is what we used to set Tokyo on fire in 1945. So it's not a, it's, it's not a new bomb, but the, the extent we use it in Vietnam... 
Um, we we clear these jungles up pretty good. So you have to ask, what heart? The U.S. did not win the hearts and minds of the Vietnam, uh, the Vietnamese people, because we burned their villages, we killed their livestock, we used chemicals on them that caused skin diseases, cancers, birth defects, and, and, and literally killed a lot of innocent Vietnamese people. So we're not really going to win a lot of hearts and minds here. Here's some pictures of some of the deformities that our chemicals cause. Agent Orange is one of the more famous, but we have, you go through the alphabet with these with these chemicals, Agent P, Agent uh, O, um, Orange, but here's some more victims of these chemicals. So what happens here, and we're going to talk about this a little bit in, um, social movements of the 1960s and the counterculture is going to form uh, this is a term this is a term used for those that went against traditional american norms the counterculture was basically established and they were against uh, established government in the u.s these large corporations they didn't like any of them uh, often this group included white middle class college students Opposition to the war, what you have here, you have hawks, these are people who supported the war, you have doves, these are people who opposed the war, these are terms used, if you remember from American one, these are terms that are used like in the War of 1812, we use them in a lot of our wars. Uh, draft, what is the draft? It required all men to register when they turned 18, and you register for the draft, it's called selective service, you still have to do this to this day, all males, when you reach 18, you have to sign up. If you don't, it's a felony and you will go to prison. So, you have conscientious objectors, you've had this in every war we've had, but these were men who claimed because of their religious beliefs they could not fight in the war, or, you know, um, philosophical belief usually religion though. Deferments. These are delayed entrance or not have to go at all. Mainly include upper class uh, because they could afford college. If you if you did not make it into college, you were automatically drafted for Vietnam. So you tried to get good grades and go to college. A draft dodger is somebody whose draft come up and they were supposed to report to the draft board. Instead, they go to Canada. Um, if you look here, I've got the song Fortunate Son by Clear, uh, Cleedence Clearwater Revival. That's a good song to listen to about some of this stuff. Another one would be the Rolling Stones, Give Me Shelter. These are famous songs, but they have political meanings behind them. The Pentagon Papers. Basically, this is a Defense Department worker, Daniel Ellsberg. He leaks out 4,000 pages um, of uh, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara's uh, notes. This seemed to prove that the government was planning an invasion of Vietnam back when uh, President Johnson promised not to send troops, like in 1964 when he was saying he was a peace president. Uh, behind the scenes, they were planning a massive invasion of Vietnam. The paper showed the U.S. did not really have a plan to fight in Vietnam, and they had no exit strategy. And if you look, here's a video of Daniel, Zell, Daniel Ellsberg explaining this in a six-minute interview. It's an excerpt, by the way. Protests on college campuses, students for a democratic society or SDS, a radical group formed on major college campuses to protest the Vietnam War. They wanted an end to the ROTC programs in colleges. So in Ohio, Kent State University, May 4th, 1970, we have student protests. Um, students are upset because Nixon ordered troops into Cambodia. Nixon promises in his campaigns he's going to get us out of Vietnam and no new invasions. However, he secretly invades Cambodia to try to stop the Ho Chi Minh Trail because what the North Vietnamese were doing were they would be chased by Americans and they'd get into Cambodia and they knew we would not enter Cambodia and they would kind of thumb their noses at us. So we invaded Cambodia. Uh, as you see, students burned the ROTC building. The governor of Ohio imposes martial law, which is temporary rule by military authorities, imposed on a civilian population, especially in times of war when civil authority has broken down. He calls out the Ohio National Guard. 
So the National Guard opens fire on a crowd on May 4th, and uh, it's a peaceful student demonstration, and they open fire on this demonstration, and four students are shot and killed. So as you see, they start to march against the National Guard. Um, the guard throws the guards throw tear gas at the students and the students throw rocks at the National Guards and the National Guards basically fire into the crowd killing these four young people by the way just uh, here's a quick documentary on it by the way um, these four kids had nothing to do with the demonstration they were walking to class they had nothing to do with this uh, the song Ohio written by Neil Young uh, he wrote it in 20 minutes after this happened and after he heard about it, and um, it's one of his most famous songs. You can listen to that as well. President Nixon in the war, he said he represented the silent majority, and these are individuals that did not demonstrate against the war or speak out against the government. He promised to start bringing the boys home from Vietnam. His approach to Vietnamization, uh, he called for gradual withdrawal from of. Uh, U.S. troops and the Army of South Vietnam to take a more uh, control or take more control of the war. He said that he would cease bombing, not the whole truth. Operation Linebacker, we bombed Cambodia for two straight weeks and guys, uh, at the end, we bombed, we, locked, we, we dropped more bombs in two weeks than we did in all of World War II. So in Vietnam, we dropped more bombs than we ever have in history up, up until that point. So, Nixon gets his peace with the honor, and basically Nixon wanted to maintain U.S. dignity in the face of withdrawal from war. Part of Nixon's strategy would be that he wanted the North Vietnamese not to know what he was going to do. That's why he invaded Cambodia. That's why he uh, launched Operation Linebackers 1 and 2. He wanted the North Vietnamese to feel very uncomfortable, and not not he didn't want to be predictable. He wanted to be very unpredictable with them, and it seems to have worked. So, Operation Frequent Wind is the largest evacuation on record starting, uh, started moving all Americans from Saigon. April 30th, 1975, Saigon falls in North Vietnam, and Saigon will be renamed Ho Chi Minh City. So, all of this, and two years later, after we, we get out of Vietnam in February of 1973, but by April 30th, 1975, South Vietnam falls to North Vietnam, and North Vietnam becomes a communist nation. <clears throat> or all of Vietnam becomes a communist nation. So, 1973, with some policy changes, the War Powers Act limits the president's power to engage troops in undeclared war. He must notify Congress within 48 hours of sending troops abroad, because remember, constitutional powers... Basically, the president controls the troops. Congress declares war-making ability. So he can send troops overseas. But as you see, he's got to notify Congress within 48 hours of sending troops abroad. American troops may not remain abroad no longer than 60 days without congressional approval. Also, 1971, you see the 26th Amendment passed because, hey, if you're old enough to fight for this nation at 18 years of age, you should be able to vote at 18. It lowers the voting age from 21 to 18. Painful legacy of this war, 58,000 troops are killed, 365,000 are wounded. Um, North and South Vietnam, 1.5 million deaths, delayed stress syndrome, what is today post-traumatic stress syndrome, and you get the Vietnam War in 1982 dedicated to, to these soldiers. Here's some pictures. Here's some Vietnam terminology. You can read through these. They're on the other PowerPoint as well. It'll help you with some of the slang and the lingo they use in movies. We are finished.